Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah the Brick. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa has ordered the Ministry of Health to tighten controls over the dispensing of medicine at government funded and private pharmacies nationwide. The Premier's order aims to ensure that drugs are dispensed to the right patients with medical prescriptions in line with the regulations in force. The Prime Minister stressed that there must be no leniency when it comes to the health and safety of citizens and residents, urging to tighten controls over drug stores to ensure that the requirements of storage and sale of narcotic drugs and controlled drugs are in place in order to leave no loophole for manipulation to achieve illegal gains at the expense of the health and safety of society members. His Royal Highness gave directive to set up a committee comprising of specialists to review the laws and procedures governing drug dispensing mechanisms in the government and private pharmacies, strengthening penalties on violators and ensuring compliance with the requirements of the laws regulating the practice of the pharmacy profession. The panel shall submit its report to the cabinet. The order aims to ensure commitment to the laws and protocols regulating the dispense of medicines in a manner that would leave no room for exploitation, making profit from them or wasting public funds allocated to purchasing medicines. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa issued a circular regarding Eid al Adha holidays. The Kingdom's Ministry's directorates and official institutions will be closed from July 30th to August 2nd, including Arafat Day and the first, second, and third days of Eid. As Friday and Saturday are seen an official weekend in the Kingdom and they fall within the holidays, Monday, August 3rd and Tuesday, August 4th are given in lieu. His Royal Highness said the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today chaired a meeting of the Government Executive Committee held remotely. He outlined the kingdom under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa is tenaciously fighting the spread of COVID-19. His Royal Highness expressed his appreciation for the efforts exerted by Team Bahrain in protecting the health and safety of Bahrain's citizens and residents. The Crown Prince noted that Bahrain's strong sense of national solidarity and collective awareness has been instrumental in overcoming COVID-19 challenges so far and expressed his confidence that health measures will continue to be observed during the Eid al-Adha break. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince also expressed his appreciation to first responders, volunteers and their support network for their selfless actions that are a central element that ensures the safety and well-being of the community. Following the considerations of a report submitted by the National Medical Task Force to combat the coronavirus COVID-19, headed by the Chairman of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the following decisions were taken regarding the Kingdom's phased reopening. The phased reopening will be dependent on several indicators, including total number of positive results against the total number of daily COVID-19 tests, the number of cases requiring intensive care of the total number of active cases, and the occupancy rate in isolation and treatment facilities. Based on these factors, the phase reopening will be assessed on an ongoing basis. The first phase of reopening is scheduled to begin on August 6, 2020, with the reopening of gyms, sport halls, outdoor sports fields and swimming pools. The second phase is scheduled to commence on September 3, 2020, with the reopening of outdoor dining at restaurants and coffee shops and the reopening of training institutions. The third phase of reopening is scheduled to take place on September 24, 2020 with the reopening of all dining services extended by restaurants and coffee shops. It was also decided to allow the gradual reopening of tourism restaurants, including those located in four- and five-star hotels, and those authorized by the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibition Authority in accordance with medical and preventative requirements by allowing reservations for special occasions that do not exceed 20 individuals per group, and provided that reservations do not exceed one reservation each time. This is effective immediately ahead of participations uh, of preparations for restaurants and coffee shops to resume all dining services. The executive committee highlighted that the level of adherence to all precautionary and preventative measures to mitigate the spread of the COVID-19 will be assessed and according to data and results, decisions will be reviewed periodically to preserve the health and safety of all.
First Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council of Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee and Chairman of the Coordination, Execution and Follow-up Committee of Istijaba, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, shared the Istijaba Committee meeting remotely. His Highness praised the efforts of the members in coordinating with government bodies in order to achieve the plans and programs of the committee in line with the directives of the representative of His Majesty, the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor and President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness. Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He added that the return of sports activities affirms that life is getting back to normal after COVID-19 stopped a number of activities. His Highness then discussed a number of topics where the committee made the following decisions. The committee approved coordinating with the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism to transform clubs into commercial companies. The committee praised the initiative to provide incentives to participate in local and international events. The committee praised the decision of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince to reopen gyms and swimming pools and sporting activities starting August 6th, according to health standards. The committee decided to uh, distribute union uh, subsidies uh, to the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, and the committee approved establishing a Society for Medical Sports and Sciences and appointing Dr. Jamal Saleh, head of the society. The committee issued a decision to allow employees to participate in uh, sports events full-time. His Highness Sheikh Khalid called on all members to exert further efforts to achieve the goals of the program that contributed in developing the Youth and Sports March in the Kingdom. The Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs congratulated His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander, First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Royal Family, the Government and People of Bahrain and the Arab and Islamic Nations on Eid Al Adha. The Council held an online meeting chaired by its President Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa, where it commended the actions, efforts, and measures taken by Saudi Arabia to ensure a safe Hajj season. It also praised the tremendous efforts exerted by Saudi Arabia in the service of the two holy mosques and in the care accorded to pilgrims and visitors providing security, easing challenges and ensuring the right conditions to perform rituals with ease and in peace. The council offered its congratulations on the success of the surgery undergone by the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, and prayed to God to bless him with good health, wellness and a long life. It also prayed to uh, God Almighty to grant uh, the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah, health, well being, speedy recovery, and a safe return to his homeland. The council reviewed a memorandum on the latest developments regarding 23 mosques under construction on being planned as well as the projects licensed by the council and built by philanthropists. The meeting highly commended the keenness of Bahrain led by His Majesty the King to care for and serve mosques and places of worship, allocating plots for their construction and providing all forms of services and support. The Minister of Labor and Social Development, Jamil Hamidan, announced that the social insurance organization, in cooperation with the ministry, will complete all the administrative procedures to transfer 50% of the salaries of insured Bahraini workers working in the private sector, the sector most affected by the coronavirus. To the, bank, uh, to the bank accounts of their employing uh, organization, which are over 11,120 companies and institutions. This step uh, encompasses uh, private companies that are included in the government's financial support program. 60,416 Bahraini employees will benefit from this step. This is the result of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's directives to consolidate national efforts to deal with the repercussions of the pandemic, as well as the decision of the cabinet and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and uh, First Deputy Premier. Hamedan stated that the enterprises uh, that can benefit from the government's financial support are the ones most affected by the repercussions of the pandemic where businesses uh, stopped either completely or partially. The economic sector most affected by the coronavirus were identified according to specific criteria after extensive study. 
The chairman of the Labour Fund, Tamkin, Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, had a Tamkin's board of directors meeting held remotely. Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa affirmed that the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the decisions of the government led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa come to provide support for SMEs in the belief of their role in enhancing economic growth in the kingdom in light of the circumstances due in to the coronavirus. He noted that Bahrain has made clear efforts to support private sector institutions and their operating costs in a manner that guarantees their continuity. The meeting also discussed the work scenarios for the coming period and focus on the sustainability of support goals while achieving the strategic goals of Temkin. The Health Ministry Undersecretary Dr. Walid Khalifa Al-Mana has called on all people to keep up their determination and sense of responsibility during the Eid holidays and continue to adhere to all measures taken to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. Al-Mana added that people should be committed to reducing the rate of infection resulting from contact during the holidays in order to avoid a repeat of the high numbers of cases that marked Eid al-Fitr in May due to not following the proper application of instructions issued by the relevant authorities. Dr. Al-Mana congratulated His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Bahrain and the Arab and Islamic nations on Eid al-Abha. He stressed that responsibility requires determination and solidarity through comm commitment to the precautionary decisions and measures to overcome the pandemic and protect individuals and families. Dr. Al-Mana highlighted the significance of limiting gatherings during Eid al-Abha to the family members in the same house while adhering to the standards of social distancing and wearing masks when near the elderly and people with underlying health conditions. He also lauded the efforts of the health workers and stressed that the doctors and nurses have had a prominent role and have been working diligently and persistently to ensure the health and safety of all members of society. Deputy Chief of Public Security Major General Abdullah Zayed opened the virtual forum held by the Ministry of Interior on the occasion of World Day Against Trafficking in Persons with the participation of a group of senior officials from ministries and relevant authorities. He conveyed the greetings of the Minister of the Interior and his aspirations for the success of the forum, which embodies Bahrain's desire to continue combating this crime and enhancing its international position to preserve achievements and contribute with all agencies locally and internationally to achieve criminal justice. He also conveyed the greetings of the Chief of Public Security to the participants and his wishes of success for the form. The form was run by the General Directorate, uh, Director of the General Directorate of Information and Security Culture, Brigadier Mohammed bin Dana, where he noted that Bahrain's achievements in this field would not have been made without its sincere national efforts and a pioneering reform project, the foundations of which were laid down by His Majesty the King. For her part, the Undersecretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Vice Chairperson of the National Committee to Combat Trafficking Persons, Dr. Sheikha Rana bint Isa Al Khalifa, highlighted that Bahrain's commitment to international standards in this field through tireless work and joint coordination between institutions in the kingdom and adopting effective initiatives and programs to combat this crime have made it a role model in the fight against trafficking in persons. A video clip was shown of the Director General of the UN Office and Executive Director of the UN Office on Drugs and Crime, Ghada Wadi, where she hailed the kingdom's experience in the field of combating trafficking in persons. UN Office on Drugs and Crime Regional Chief Dr. Hatem Fuad Ali praised the efforts efforts of Bahrain in combating human trafficking as well as its advanced systems in this field. The head of the public prosecution, Dr. Ali Abbas al shuaykh stressed the role of the public prosecution in law enforcement and the main features of the anti-trafficking law, noting Bahrain's interest in taking all measures that would combat trafficking in persons. For her part, the Director of Grievances and Protection at the Labor Market Regulatory Authority, Shireen Saati, confirmed that in line with the necessity of achieving the highest levels of protection for migrant workers from falling victim to the crime of trafficking in persons, 
11th, the Labor Market Regulatory Authority introduced uh, the Grievance and Protection Department. She noted that the protection of migrant workers as required can only be through an integrated system and partnership with various departments. The Director of Anti-Human Trafficking and Protecting Public Morals at the General Directorate of Investigation and Forensic Science at the Ministry of Interior, Colonel Abdel Wahab Rashid Bunanshi, indicated that the director or the directorate is working on the safety, protection and care of the victims, whether before or after the crime took place, and then taking the necessary legal measures. The Director General of the General Department of Investigation and Criminal Evidence, Brigadier Abdelaziz Ramehi, also has delivered a speech at the conclusion of the forum in which he emphasized that the international date to combat trafficking in persons constitutes an excellent opportunity to affirm the Kingdom's support and permanent commitment to global plans to combat crimes of trafficking in persons, according to the mechanisms of the United Nations nations that call for the coordination of efforts between states and international bodies in the framework. The UN Office on Drugs and Crime is proud to be part of the strategic partnership framework between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United Nations. Over the past decade, UNODC has worked with Bahrain to implement international commitments addressing challenges posed by illicit drugs, transnational organized crime, terrorism, and corruption. The Sunni Endowment Department said Eid prayers in Bahrain will be performed at home at 5.31 a.m. on Friday. Mosques will proclaim the traditional Eid Takbir from 5 until 5.31 or 5.31 a.m. The Takbir traditionally uh, precedes the prayers and ceremonies, but there will be no prayers. Bahrain has shut down mosques as part of the preventative measures to mitigate the spread of the coronavirus through congregations. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 3,231 with 421 recoveries, 351 registered new cases. The Ministry of Health urges everyone to adhere to the rules and affirm the importance of following health instructions and avoiding public spaces when possible.